Relationship advice. Found out my best friend, 25 female, has been using my pictures, 26 female, to catfish a guy she's been talking to since 2015. Man. I don't know where to go from here, so I thought I'd go to Reddit. My best friend, we'll call her Maggie, and I met our freshman year of college. We are now roommates and moved in together two years ago. In 2015, my best friend spent spring break a couple states away, and matched with a guy on Tinder. When she came back to campus, she immediately told me about him and how amazing he was, and how they only went out to dinner once, edit, this was obviously a lie, but that they were talking 24-7. I got super excited and asked to see a pic. That was the only picture of him she's ever shown me. Over the past 5 years, he's literally been her whole world. She talks about him constantly. She always has her nose in her phone. She gets clingy when he takes too long to text back, she's cried to me a few times, because she's lurked on his social media and seen he was around other girls, my roommate doesn't have social media herself. I had asked a few times why they have never met up again, and she said they're both too busy and don't have the money for the trip. I even told her that he could stay with us and that would save some money. He's sent presents, and even flowers on Valentine's Day every year. They've basically been dating this whole time. So yesterday, my roommate picked up a shift at work and was gone. I get a knock on our door and I open it to a guy. He says hi, and I give a confused hi? And then he barges in and scoops me up into a hug. He starts saying, I thought you were working? I was hoping your roommate was here so I could surprise you when you got back and I am so confused. I immediately get down and back away, and let him know I have absolutely no clue what he's talking about. My brain can't even process what's happening. Then he looks confused, and says, Maggie? And I'm like no. That's my roommate? My roommate and I look nothing alike, so I'm even more confused. Then something kind of clicks, and I think, oh my god, is this the guy she's been dating? So I say, wait, are you Adam? And he gives me a very slow yes, and I get excited, and say, oh my god, I bet Maggie is going to flip out. I can't believe you're here. His demeanor completely changes. He asks me what I'm talking about. I'm Maggie? And I tell him no, I'm Summer. Maggie's roommate. At this point I'm still completely missing something he has just pieced together. He just says, holy fk, and looks like he doesn't know what to say. Eventually he asks if he can sit down. I invite him in. He then proceeds to tell me for the past 5 years, he's thought he's been talking to me. Every picture he's ever seen of Maggie has actually been pictures of me. I'm completely dumbfounded, and we don't know what to say to each other at first. So. He gets out his phone and shows me proof. He has tons of pictures of me saved on his phone, and went to their messages and showed me proof that she's been sending them to him. I felt and still feel completely sick to my stomach. I get out my phone and show him real pictures of her. I tell him maybe they could just talk when she gets off of work, and he's really pissed at this point. I say maybe we should call her first and let her know he's here. So I do that, and she starts flipping out. Saying she's not coming home. Tells him to leave and that she won't talk to him. He calls her and starts yelling at her over the phone. After everyone calms, she eventually comes home. He's hurt and accusing, she's crying. I'm sitting there awkwardly. She tells him that she's still the same person he's had feelings for, and he screams at her, No, I thought I was in love with your roommate. And that completely makes her break down, so I tell him maybe he should leave for the night and everyone should have their own space. He agrees, and after he leaves, she goes completely psychotic on me and starts throwing things around the living room. Tells me she hates me, I start crying, it's a mess. I left to stay with a friend and haven't been back so I don't know what's gone down. I feel like I have no idea who the person I'm living with is, and I feel weirdly violated. Do I move out? Do I try to call her? She hasn't even texted me. I don't know how to deal with this situation. Now for the top advice before reading the poster's update. I was the Adam in a situation like this. It was three years. You need to move out, get away from this Maggie. People like that are not okay. Don't put yourself through this anymore. I went no contact when it happened, effective immediately. My Maggie messed with me for years to come, and we were countries apart. Just get away and stay away. That's all I have to say. If OP is doubtful about running fast, she should watch the Catfish movie before it became a dramatized show. That stuff is next levels of messed up. You should watch a documentary called Tell Hot Blonde. Holy cow, this documentary was so many levels of mind screw. I still think about it from time to time years later.
Run. Heard the beat drop for a second. She catfished him for years. This is a horrible human being. Get all your pictures off her devices. Notify your college security and file a police complaint against her. You have no way of knowing how many people she sent your pictures to. What she did, was a huge violation of your privacy and your rights as a person. She's totally untrustworthy. She's already committed identity theft, and toyed with a guy's heart for over a presidential term. I wonder what else she'd do. Now for the update. Thank you guys for all of your advice and comments, many saying you've been in mine or Adam's position, it's made me feel better. I'm gonna go ahead and just post an update, because I don't think there will be more of an outcome than this. I ended up having a phone call with Adam, mostly because I wanted to know about the pictures she sent. Turns out she sent pics of me in my underwear, and nudes that aren't actually of me. Or her. So, we're assuming she got those from Google. He feels really bad and is actually having a hard time with all of this. I assured him I don't blame him at all for the underwear pics, or anything like that. He ended up telling me that they actually have FaceTimed, but she would never show her face, only the top of her head slash hair which is dyed a similar color to mine, never thought anything of this, now I think it might be really weird, and her excuse was, she felt like she looked bad on video, was self-conscious, didn't have makeup on, etc. He said he didn't think it was weird. I don't know. He also told me he's tried a ton of times to arrange visits to meet, and she's came up with excuses every time. Said that he's been mostly content to talk through text slash over the phone up until this point. Also said he's going to try to reach out to her one more time to talk about everything, but that he's moving on. As for me, I'm not sure I can break my lease yet, but I'm going to go ahead and move out and in with a friend until my lease is over. We briefly talked when I went to my apartment, and she sort of half apologized but is still pretty hostile and defensive. So, I'm going to give her space. I feel bad for her, but I don't think our friendship is going to survive this whole thing. Anyway, this has been some crazy event, and I appreciate all of the responses I got. Y'all are awesome. Now for the next story. My, 26 male, girlfriend, 24 female, found an engagement ring I was keeping safe for my friend until he was ready to propose. She thought it was for her and is furious that it wasn't. I've been dating my girlfriend Laura for just over two years. We met as I was finishing my masters and she was in her last year of undergrad, as we attended the same university. We have a pretty strong relationship overall, we get along well and have pretty similar views slash goals in life, and I love her a great deal. She's definitely been the healthiest relationship I've ever had, and I see a strong future with her. This weekend has been awful however. My best friend Rob, came to me about a month ago and told me that he had a plan to propose to his long-term girlfriend Grace of about 7 years. The problem was, that they live together and she's a very clean person, and he was afraid she might find the ring while cleaning before he was ready to propose. I offered to hide it for him at my house until he was ready, and he handed it over. I hid it in the back of my sock drawer and honestly kind of forgot about it, until last Monday, when he asked for it back. He, successfully, proposed to Grace yesterday and she posted a picture of the two of them on her Instagram with the ring clearly visible. Literally 5 minutes after she posted, Laura rang me absolutely fuming. She told me she'd found that ring 3 weeks ago, so why had I given it to Rob for Grace when I'd clearly chosen it especially for her? Was Grace mocking her with her post, just rubbing her nose into the fact that she'd stolen her ring? I tried to talk her down and explain that I'd just been keeping it safe for Rob, and that I'd never intended to propose to her with it. But that only made her more upset and she starting screaming at me, that I'd absolutely built up her hopes and just destroyed them. She hung up on me, then texted me that I had 3 months to propose to her, with a better ring than Grace's, or she's going to break up with me. Am I wrong for thinking this is a red flag? I know that she probably was really excited and I absolutely never meant to hurt her feelings with all of this, but the ring was never for her and she never should have known about it. We don't live together, and I don't know what she was doing snooping in my drawers, or when she had the time to look in there or what she was looking for her. More than that, I am 100% not ready for marriage. We've only been together for 2 years, haven't lived together, haven't even talked about marriage yet. I want to be living together for at least a year before we get engaged. What do I do? I totally understand why she'd be upset, but I just feel like she's invaded my privacy by looking through my stuff, and that I'm being treated badly for something that was never meant as a snub towards her. This is the first big fight we've had and I'm not sure if I'm just seeing red flags because I'm hurt, or if they're really there. 
Now for the top advice. Rule number one, don't ever get married if you're not ready. I won't even touch on her reaction and proposal demand lol. Dude, I can understand that she's devastated, but that, propose to me in three months or else, is too much even for someone in the heat of the moment. The time frame is a red flag. The, with a better ring in the time frame, is a massive, massive, red flag. Then it will turn into, I'll divorce you if you don't do X within three months. She's demanding you propose? LOL, run. Yeah, she said, you owe me this since you just broke my freaking heart. You don't owe her anything. If she's unwilling to listen to your side of it, I doubt she'd be willing to hear an explanation from your friend. But to be honest, is this the kind of crazy you want to be with forever? This sounds like just the tip of the iceberg with her. She's never acted this way before, she's normally pretty rational and calm, but this has all just shown me another side of her. I don't know if she's just lashing out because she's upset, but I'm actually really upset about the whole situation myself. I feel like even if she does apologize for this, I'll just be tiptoeing around her waiting for her to explode again. Well, she totally set herself up for that. That being said, I can see how she could be upset, even though it is completely her fault. You need to give her time to calm down, and see if she becomes more rational. Do not give in to her ultimatum, if you are not ready for marriage, you are not ready. Do not be pushed into it. I wholeheartedly agree with your desire to live with her a year before a marriage proposal, a wise plan. If she can't get over her mistake, then it is a massive red flag and I wouldn't proceed with her any further. Her actions will have demonstrated that she will let completely irrational emotions resulting from her own mistakes, be the driving force in your relationship. You can't live that way bro. Now for the last story. My, 26 female, boyfriend, 27 male, ran off in the middle of the night with our newborn son, 2 weeks old male. As title says, we have a newborn son who is 2 weeks old. To recap the period leading up to this event. We had the baby on a Thursday and came home on Saturday. Roses. Everything was absolutely beautiful. Our relationship had never been stronger and we were so so happy. More in love with each other and with the little one than we thought possible. On Sunday, we decided to pop a bottle of champagne. I have one glass and he continues saying, we can get drunk now. I obviously didn't want to get drunk, but did not discourage him since we hadn't drank in months, we used to drink together nightly. He ended up quite belligerent by the end of the night, and it resulted in tears on my end since he was acting out of character. The next morning, he sincerely apologized and said that if he ever got drunk like that again, he would stop drinking. That evening rolls around and we have a glass of wine with dinner. I did not want another, but he continued to finish the bottle, and another. Drunk again, more tears. I explained to him, while he was drunk, the conversation we had the night prior about him not doing this, and he broke down and came to bed and promise not to again. After a week of being home, my mother begins to travel to us, we live in Colorado, she lives in New York, to visit us for two weeks to help get settled with the baby. This visit has been planned for four months and was not a surprise. In the two days she is traveling, my boyfriend begins to transition from happy new father to protective new father. It is a difference, but he is very confident in his new role and feels that his life has changed and he is very happy. My mother arrives at 8 am on a Monday, and proceeds to say hi to us, although quite exhausted, and goes to sit on our porch to decompress after 48 hours of travel. My boyfriend comes to me and says that she was disrespectful when she arrived. I question him and say, I'm pretty sure she's just tired. Let's let her rest, and then we can all have a conversation about boundaries and more once she's rested. He agreed and moved on with the morning. I didn't think anything else of it. At around 9.30 am, 90 minutes after her arrival, she passes him in the kitchen and he raises his voice and exclaims to her about how she will not be disrespectful of him in his house, and more. I begin to bawl and beg him to stop. My mother, completely taken aback, goes outside crying. My boyfriend is livid, I can see it in his eyes. I try to calm him down and go to check on my mother, who I then try to calm down. He comes outside and asks to speak to her, and I leave them alone, hindsight, should not have done this, and after about one minute, my mom comes back inside yelling and crying, I'm done, I'm done, and tells me she is going to go back home. I try to speak to both of them, but I can't stop crying. Had a baby 10 days ago at this point. My mother packs up to leave and does. My boyfriend thinks he has done the right thing and protected his family unit. I am devastated that my mom is gone as I wanted her help and guidance with the newborn. 
he is confident in his decision. In the next two days this confidence does not wane, and he says he, had to hurt me in this situation to maintain his family. We went to bed around 11. We had argued some earlier in the evening, but when bedtime rolled around, we were actually on good terms, and I went to sleep pretty hard because of that. I wake up to a stranger shouting my name, and I look over and the baby is not in his bed. I run out and a policeman is inside. The shower is running. The door is open. The policeman informs me that my boyfriend took the baby and ran out of our apartment building into a house up the street and rang their doorbell. The officer asked me to come with him and he took me to the house where my boyfriend went. There were many officers outside asking me questions about different things. The consensus was, that my boyfriend thought someone was going to kill him, so he took the baby and ran. The officers took me inside the house, gave me the baby, and then let me know they were taking my boyfriend to the hospital for an evaluation. The officers took me to a hotel for safety. The hospital ruled the case a mental break, and that he was fine. He seemed fine when I picked him up and we went home. As the day went on, he got more and more paranoid, so I called the police when he went to work. He insisted that I had bugged the apartment, that the neighbors were in on it, that my mom called our pediatrician, and more. The police suggested for us to separate for the evening and he stayed home and the baby and I are in a hotel again. What should I do now? He is continually paranoid now. I have a baby to protect. I don't feel he is being rational in our home. Please help. Thank you for reading this. Now for the top advice before reading the little update. He should be mentally evaluated, may have some type of mental disorder, which untreated, could get worse. I don't want to defend the guy. But this is so weird and extreme, and his actions are so off he doesn't seem there. Mostly at that age, mental health stuff really starts to become apparent. Hijacking the top comment. This is not a mental break, this sounds like psychosis. He needs an admission to hospital and to start some medications. That, or take the baby to your mother's house and separate yourself from him. Your baby's safety is paramount. What country and state are you in? It probably most helpful to give you specific advice. Sincerely a mental health nurse. Just weighing in to say, I had a psychotic episode and behaved like your partner. Took a good six months on medication and time off work to come back from that. He needs meds, a good psychiatrist, and most of his responsibilities taken away from him. This is reassuring. Thank you. Do not go back to your house alone with him and the baby. Call your mom. Get help. He needs to be evaluated, and you need to protect yourself and your child, he's not stable. Do you have any friends or other family you can stay with until he is evaluated and treated? I'm scared for you, so please please, contact your mom. Your boyfriend is exhibiting symptoms of paranoid schizophrenia, and should see a psychiatrist. I don't know how the hospital was not able to see that earlier, but the classic symptoms are there. For you and your baby's safety, request a psychiatric evaluation on him before you meet. I agree. I have an aunt with schizophrenia and it really became apparent after she had a child. My father has schizophrenia that exploded after he had me. He would seem fine, and then boom, another episode. He would be paranoid and not know who he was or who my mom was, and it did eventually spiral into emotional and physical abuse. I would request an evaluation for your safety and your babies. Update. Overwhelming response, I did not expect this. The baby and I are safe. I called his mother who is now traveling to come get him. I called my sister who is planning to come now once he is gone from the house, so she and I can go back together. Thank you all. This has been the worst week after the best week, and I am exhausted. I turned to Reddit to rationalize what I was thinking, since I don't have people to talk to outside of the situation. Thank you for the responses. Update 2, updating here, two months later. Baby and I are safe, and boyfriend has been getting help at his mom's. I went to my mom's. I've been communicating with his mom, and he seems to be improving from her perspective. Thank you all again for the messages and the comments, it helped to have outside perspective when I was overwhelmed. I'm much better now than I was then. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.